everybody. Welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is... Luke Smith. And we're ready to continue our playthrough of Arcadia Quest. And you guys provide lots of great suggestions for what Luke should do for his turn. Luke, who got the most votes? Brandon Springer? 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 We... Sponger. <laughs> <laughs> we're not completely sure how to say your last name. But your first suggestion was fantastic. What does he want you to do here? He wants little old Seth yes. to give a present to Johan. Oh, that's very nice. A smack in the face <laughs> with magic. Okay. Now you said Johan. Don't you mean Johan? No, it's, his name is in Swedish. Oh, so in other words, I was mispronouncing his name the entire last episode. Pretty much. <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone, for your comments about that. You're probably right. It probably is the Swedish spelling. My apologies. All right, let's go to the table and see what happens next. Seth is going to use his life drain, which gives him two dice. Okay, so you're going to see some range. <laughs> Oh, Caught. okay, so we definitely have a hit. And this one, go ahead and re-roll that one because it's on its edge. Oh, oh no! Yes! <laughs> wow. Now, there was some comments from the last video saying that your rolling head wasn't quite as good as it sometimes is. Excuse me? <laughs> okay, well, it seems like things have changed. Oh. Uh, Okay, oh. wow, that was super close because three hits would have knocked yep. out Johan. But in this case, it's just two damage. I say just two, but that's that's a lot. And I can't roll any defense dice. No, because it's a magic attack. That's right. Now here's something that's really terrible. I don't get to roll any defense dice. Why is that? Because when Seth attacks with magic, yes. nobody can defend. Right. And it gets worse for you. <laughs> I use Life Drain, which let me heal for every hit. That's right, and you got two hits, so you get to heal two wounds. You only had one wound, but still, you're back up to full health on Seth. Okay, well, you're not done yet. You can still move. Do you plan to move? Yes. All right, let's go back to the table and see what Luke's going to do. Now for my movement, Brandon suggested that I teleport yes. over here and get out of the way of Dan. And over here are the two waiter twins, one of them who remembers the wounds you inflicted last time and is looking for revenge. All right, for my turn, I wanna jump right into the fray, but instead, I'm going to rest. So I have to remove all the guild tokens off of the items that I've used this turn. I can move things around. I actually even considered giving one of Scarlet's weapons over to Johan because he's you know closer to the fray. He's also closer to dying, though. Yeah. So if he's dead, then that's one less weapon I'm oh. probably going to be able to use this turn. Yes? You should give him his treasure. You should give <laughs> Oh, swap treasure. the treasure over? Yeah. No, that's a terrible idea. I'm going to keep Scarlet with <sighs> wonderful it. treasure at the back where she is now. But you're right. You can move treasures around. You can't move wounds around. I'd like to be able to do that, but I, <laughs> but I can't. All right. Um, that's it for me. I've got no one to resurrect. It's back over to your turn. So for my turn, I'm going to activate green sleeves. And this is also part of Brandon's suggestion, right? Yep. Go over here and use his slingshot on Johan. <laughs> well, we are getting lots of opportunities to pronounce Johan's name correctly in this episode. <laughs> so you get two, two dice. dice. Ranged. Ooh, yes. one hit. Now here's the thing. I do get to roll defense dice. Dang it. I have a chance to block this. I'm going to be able to roll three defense dice. I just need to see one shield. And oh. there's a shield and a crit. So I could roll again. Oh, but come on. <laughs> I did successfully block it. Now, there had been some suggestions that Luke used Seth to come back and fire at Johan. That way, I wouldn't get any defense dice. But I know you were concerned about doing that because you want to use Seth's abilities for other things. We'll see if your decision paid off. Well, I can't help myself. I'm going to have Johan throw his sword again, and he's going to target green sleeves this time. We do have line of sight right to green sleeves. I get to roll three dice, and remember, swords hit because of his natural ability. And, well, we have one miss, two hits, and, and I a get a reroll. To, yes. Let's see. Not a reroll, an extra roll. And there we go. Whew. Three potential hits. And I get three defense because of my parrying blade. Right, you have a weapon that's going to give you an additional defense die. Uh. And, yeah, but still, that was a really, really good roll. You blocked two of them. One wound does get through. Not enough to hurt Greensleeves significantly because Greensleeves has four life. Honestly, to use up my awesome sword throwing abilities and only get one wound, I think really actually helped you out, Luke. And like a big chicken, Johan's now going to run away. 
one, two. That should be far enough to keep me out of your range of sight. And protect the treasure carrying thief. Well, Grom is getting very impatient waiting for his turn. <laughs> yes, well, is he going to do something? Yes, he's going to attack the Hammer Beast Man. Well, this is not good for the Hammer Beast Man because one more wound and the Hammer Beast Man is dead. Yep. So go ahead, you get to roll your attack dice. I'm using the Rusty Blade to attack, yes. which gives me three. Okay. And one more because I have a wound on me. Right, your natural ability gives you an extra die roll when you're wounded. Oh! Well, this is, this uh, is pretty good. So you've got two hits for sure, and you're gonna get to roll another die. Now, if you could roll up to five damage, you would prevent a payback reaction. Okay, that's not gonna happen. You've only managed to do two wounds, which we'll add here just as a reminder that the Beast Man is dead. But I get a payback reaction. I mean, the Hammer Beast Man does. And this is a four die attack. Which, wow. <laughs> he, he really wanted to throw his hammer, apparently. I did manage to get one hit and maybe more, we'll see. Okay, two. But now you get to roll your defense. And I get two defense dice. That's right, normally Grom gets one, but again, because he's wounded, plus one die to everything. Well, you're gonna take another wound. Now, as I remove the Hammer Beast Man from the board and put him in the graveyard, there's a couple of things we want to make sure we don't forget. First of all, the Hammer Beast Man has a special ability, and it says, anytime he lands a hit on a target, that target becomes... Dazed. Dazed, right. So Grom's going to lay down again as a reminder that he's dazed. Now, Grom will not be able to roll defense dice when he's attacked. Also, you get... Coins! You do. Two. Two coins for you for killing the Hammer Beast Man. Thank Congratulations. you. And I also wanted to mention, off camera, Luke pointed out something that I could have done, and I thought it was a pretty decent strategy. So before we continue with my turn, I just want to show you what he was thinking. Now, Luke, why don't you tell people what it is you think I should have done before attacking with the Hammer Beast Man? Well, you have a movement, and you should have unlocked that door. Right, I could have used the movement point I had to unlock this door that's sort of closing in the orc captain. Now, why would I want to do that? I don't think it's any mystery here. Luke appears to be trying to set up to run through and get to the troll here. Be Maybe. <laughs> kill Schmetterling and then complete that quest. Anything I can do to slow him down is gonna help me out. If this door was open, then Luke moving here, well, that wouldn't cause any problems, but if you wanted to move from here to here, you'd be leaving a space close to a monster, that monster would get a guard reaction. So you'd either have to stop and fight the orc captain or take a risk. Both of which would have been good for me. I thought that was pretty clever. Well, Scarlet is tired of hiding in the shadows, so she's gonna advance two spaces, and now, hopefully, her attack will be true because she's gonna target green sleeves again, this time using the ranged attack of a Nova Bolt. If I get a crit, it means I'm gonna be able to target another close character, which means Grom could get hit as well. That, uh, that didn't happen. One hit though, let's see if Luke can block it. I get three dice. All right, let's see if you get at least one shield. Wow! Two, <laughs> and to rub it in. <laughs> oh brother, <laughs> okay. So you definitely overblocked that. Very unfortunate for me. For my turn, Seth is going to use Nova Bolt on Bunk, yes. and this will show you how to attack with it properly. <laughs> you think you're going to roll better than I did? Of course. Rolling a crit's not easy. Go ahead, let's see what you get. All right, well, it wasn't a crit, but you uh. did get one wound in there. These guys don't have defense dice, but it doesn't matter. Bunk already had a wound. One extra wound is going to kill him, but he does get a payback reaction. So he'll advance one space and attack Seth. Oh, he dragged his buddy with him. <laughs> Here we go, only one attack. And it's three dice, so that's a pretty big hit. Let's see, ooh, two possible hits. And three hits in total. Seth, you only have two dice. Good luck. Whoa, Good luck. Crit. Okay, let's see. Crit, crit, crit. Oh, Aww. still not too bad. Two wounds will be added to Seth's hero card. That doesn't kill him. He can still take one more wound, but the Orc Marauder has been killed. And you're going to get one coin for that. 
We have a full spawn tile, and that means it's time to bring out some new monsters. We do that by rolling two of the black dice, and we pair that with each of the monsters as we go along. I'll do the first one here, and I've rolled a sword and a bow. And we do have a sword and a bow on the board here. Dang it! And that it. means that we're going to have a goblin archer here. Well, Luke, why don't you roll for the next monster then? And let's see. It's a sword and a crit. And there's a spawn point with that right here. So this orc marauder will go into this space. I'll roll the next orc marauder. We have two bows. Now because there's no spawn tokens on the board that show two bows, this orc marauder actually gets removed from the game. And if you're trying to follow along, I'll quickly point out the spawn tiles are here, 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 and in this spot. Luke, why don't you go ahead and roll up the hammer beast man. Oh boy, oh boy. It is a sword and a crit. Now there is a sword and a crit right here, but this space is full. And that means the orc beast man can't go there and is removed from the game. I'll roll up the last one here. It's two swords, which puts this orc marauder right here. Now it's over to my turn. Well, my Trixie thief is going to try once again to defeat green sleeves. I'm going to be using my slingshot, which gives me two attack dice and I'm looking for bows. Can I get any? I only got one. Luke, you get three dice. This shouldn't be a problem. And there it is. You blocked it. So there's no damage going on to green sleeves. And time for me to run back into the shadows. I'd say it's about time you rested, Luke. Nope. What are you planning to do here? I'm going to move Grom one. Yes. Open up the door. Two, and then three. <laughs> take this. I think it's great that you're laying down because it's like you're sneaking in. And oh my goodness, medicine. look what you just picked up. Medicine. Now this is something that you can use right away or save for later. This healing potion, when used, removes all wounds from the hero that used it. And if they had any death curses, it would remove those as well. Now that's not death tokens. Those are the curses you get from death tokens. Now this is kind of good. And it's not for you because yeah. Grom picked it up. And Grom Ching. actually rolls better when he's got at least one wound on him. Yeah. So if you use it right now, you lose that ability. Do you want to use it or save it for later? I wish not to use it. Okay. Well, now it's my turn. Let's go back and see what I'm going to do. Now, Luke, you're pretty lucky that Schmetterling takes his cooking so seriously. Because if his nose wasn't in a pot right now, I'm pretty sure he would have turned around and clubbed you on the head. I'm going to have Spike move up one. Two to unlock the door, and three to move into this space. That's it for me. For my turn, I'm just resting. Okay, well that means Grom's going to get to stand up. Now you had the option to activate green sleeves. You could go one, two, three, and then attack the troll. The problem is the payback reaction could have been really brutal. Let's take a quick look and see what Schmetterling's abilities are. First of all, he can move two spaces before attacking, and when he does attack, he gets to roll four dice. Perhaps even worse, it says he targets all close heroes. So if Grom and Greensleeves were on a space together, even though the payback reaction would be towards Greensleeves, Grom would be getting hit too. And then finally, this symbol here indicates that he gets two rerolls. So if I was rolling that attack and I got a couple of ranged dice, I could reroll them hoping for swords or crits. In other words, He's dangerous. For my turn, I had a couple of tempting options. Spike here has, still has both of his weapons, and I could teleport him over here and attack Seth, or even come over here and take a shot at Grom. But I feel like Seth is the sure thing, and that's what I'm gonna go with. So one movement point to go like that, and now he whips out his parrying blade and goes for the attack. I need to see swords. Wow, we're seeing it. swords and crits. I get to roll again. And it's oh. another sword. That's huge. Luke, you get to roll two defense dice. Oh. And you only blocked one of them. So that is actually two damage that gets through. And because Seth already had two wounds, Seth has been killed. So Seth's going to go back to his hero card and collect another death token. So anytime you defeat a hero, you gain one coin for that, which I'll collect now. But also, I've completed the Kill Orange PvP quest, and the bonus for completing that first means that I get an additional coin. At the end of the scenario, I'm going to get another coin as well. If I complete one more quest, 
I win this scenario. But I doubt that he's gonna make that easy for me and you probably aren't going to either because now it's your turn to let us know what do you think Luke should do for his next turn. All of his heroes, well, I was gonna say all of his heroes are rested. Not, not quite. I guess one of them's taking a dirt nap. Um, <laughs> and then the other ones are kind of beat up. Now you're in a bad way, actually. So go ahead, let Luke know what he should do in the comments below. If you like what someone suggests, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, propose your own suggestion. Whichever one gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.